All right, so just a little background of what I'm doing. Um, Demigod486 had asked, he's removing the inventory system um, following this video um, by the developer uh, for the dynamic combat system. And he said he couldn't figure out how to do the attached mesh macro. Um, and inside it, it does show you how to do it. So in this video, um, you can see attached a component and, and whatever, but he doesn't exactly explain how he does this. So I kind of wanted to do a quick video for it and also explain about component references a little bit, just so that people understand them a little bit better if you're a beginner. So in dynamic combat system, you just open it up, go to combat character, um, and first of all, in the video, he has all of his items disabled. So in the stock, in a stock file like this, it's not disabled. But if you're following along with the video and you have all of your items are not showing on your inventory, that's where you should be. But I can do it just by changing this to none. Changing, because I, I clicked on the inventory component here in your character. This is where you can edit items in your inventory. So I changed the Elven Bow to zero. And then you, one important thing you have to do is you have to hit generate. So after that, compile, you can see that I have no bow. So just as an example of what I'm going to do here, I'll create a macro, uh, call it attach to mesh. Actually, you know what, before I do this, let me just explain uh, how component references work quick. Okay, so, um, when you're looking for a reference and you're you're looking to like get health and you can't get health because health you know isn't a a variable on the side like a float value uh, and you have a component reference for extended health for example um that is where you can get your current health and the reason why this is like this is obviously because you can control a lot more variables within here using functions so if i go to extended health extended stat component, I guess, um, you can see that there is a get current value function. And this function is called when using this. So that's why component references are awesome and also how to get them. Because a lot of things I couldn't figure out, like, um, you know, if you want your max health or something like that, it's a lot easier to do this than have a bunch of floats controlling things because it's just it's going to become a mess really really fast so the advantage is obviously that as well as you can do a ton of different th stuff with com components from equipment to inventory to you know pretty much everything you can do with them so I'll close this now and the other thing is if i wanted to get current value you can only get that function from those components. So if you don't have the component at all in your character, you wouldn't be able to get the values at all because they're not part of Unreal's Unreal at all. They're part of the component blueprints. Um, so a lot of people will not understand how to get references to certain things. And it's because if you don't drag off of a pin, then it doesn't understand the reference that it's going for. So there's certain things that you can get off your player controller that there's no other way by typing like this that you'll ever, ever get them. You have to pull them off of this pin. So yeah, that's kind of a trick to Unreal and, and something you gotta get used to, but it's just kind of a guess and check thing if you don't know. So back to what I was saying. If I go to my mesh, attach the mesh thing, I wanna create an input here. The very first one you see on his is an executable, so exec. And then you want to create a component reference. So um, how you find that, so you can see that target is scene component. And there's a component. This target wouldn't attach unless it was the scene component. So scene component. And you're getting an object reference. That's why it's a blue object reference. So there's our component reference. Um, the other thing is in this attached to component, they actually change this. I'm not sure when, 
but now it's component to component. They broke it up into two different functions, I guess. And you connect your output from my new. Okay. Um, and then you can see in here that he's got a parented mesh and he's got a socket name that he's got matched to there. So what, you're, what you want to do is you want to obviously drag this over to get that socket name as an input for it. Because there's, again, if I undo that, click on inputs and I click on add an input. And I was to go socket. There is no pink socket, it doesn't exist. So, you have to drag from that pin and add the pin to the node. Now in here you can see that it adds the mesh component reference. So, if I compile that, um, I'll go back to my begin play. So in here, just for fun, just to show you how the function works, or the macro works, I'll hit B. Try to choose a simple input and you gotta look for it. There we go. Okay. There's my attached to mesh. If you watch his video again, just for reference. See, he's got specific meshes. Now, because again, those are object references, you have to add a component. He shows you how to do this as well. It's called bow mesh. Then you parent that to your mesh. Um, he sets a socket, but you set your socket when you attach to mesh, so there's really no point. Um, Elven bow animation blueprint, elder bow. Okay. Bow mesh socket name. And this does have to be spelled correctly. So if you go under your bow mesh and look at your sockets, you can see that bow has no capitals, no nothing. Bow. Compile. The other thing is in your viewport, you can see that the bow is in the wrong location. And that's because when I parented it to the mesh, just went in a funny spot. Turn on you. Oh, right. So <laughs> because I didn't set the parent socket, you saw me set it there and then it was on my guy. So this is me showing the example of how this works. You can see the bow floating under the under my character. And as soon as I hit B, it parents it to my character. So that's why, why I did this like this. I forgot at the end of my video here. Yeah, so that should be pretty everything. Um, this is, again, how you make this. You drag from that component reference. Otherwise, you cannot get this. Um, you might be able to get a reference to it, but it's going to look different than the one that's in the video anyway. Sometimes you can't get those references though, like the socket name, for example. Um, and then in there, just attached to mesh, you can do this just like his video as well, where you put it on the hide items or whatever you're going to do. And yeah, that's, uh, I think that's everything.